Hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be doing more Salmonella. We are concluding the trilogy of Salmonella videos that I just so happen to have done recently. I've just been in kind of a Salmonella mood. Don't worry if you're not interested in the Salmonella stuff, what is wrong with you? But also I'm gonna be doing something different tomorrow. I'm gonna to put them on the shelf for a little bit and we'll return to them at a later point. But I did hear through the grapevine, side note here, that he's coming back pretty soon. And if he puts out a new video anytime, I'm jumping to that. I, I don't care what the subject is. I, I don't know what he could possibly do after a year's hiatus, but I'm curious to what's been uh, going on in his brain. I didn't see the post where he said he was coming back, but I guess he posted on his subreddit or something. So you guys let me know about that. So I'm very excited to see what he does next. Now, let's talk about this video. We have 10 worst animal skeletons. I have no idea what that means. I don't know how you measure a best or worst animal skeleton. I don't know if he means from like a practical standpoint or just appearance, but I guess we're gonna find out. I'm very excited to see what angle he takes with this. Um, I, I'm surprised out of all the videos of his that I haven't done yet, I chose this one, but it's just what stood out to me at the time. So we're doing it. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> Hey kids, oh, as we all know, the evolution of species is an incredible process driven by little more than the random chance that certain mutations may happen to provide a practical advantage in a creature's environment. And as a result, there's a lot of things out there that look super dumb once you strip back a few layers. Here's the top 10 worst animal skeletons of all time. So first- So we're doing appearance, okay. Like I, I'm not even sure, let me, th I'm trying to think of what would even go on the list. Ant eater is kind of weird. I've seen that one. That that one's a little bit strange. Um, trying to think of something just mundane that would be on the list, but honestly, I I can't think of much else that that's really weird. I know there's stuff out there. I've seen some weird ones. I just don't know what they are. First and foremost, I'd like to settle a little debate I've been seeing floating around the past few weeks. Yes, penguins do, in fact, have knees. But in order to hide full-grown legs into one plump cylinder, you gotta have a little skeletal trickery on your side. You guys ever do wall sits in gym class or elsewhere? One of the most torturous exercises out there. Oh, no. I now feel even worse for penguins, because feel not that. only did they have to deal with living in a frigid black and white hellscape, the most hostile environment known to man second only to the vacuum of space, all the while constantly pursued by ravenous, bloodthirsty sea dogs, but they're also secretly doing well oh. since their entire life. Quick side note, in May- Hold on. Sea dogs, the but they're also secretly doing- Oh, that's interesting. I, I, since they're stuck in that, I assume this means that they can't extend them. I was thinking when he, when he said they're doing wall sets, I'm just thinking like, Oh, are they able to extend them? Can we have a taller penguin? I know that's a stupid question, but that's the first thing that comes up in my head. Um, but if you can't extend it, is it really a knee? That's what I'm curious about. And do they even feel it the same way that we do? Like, yeah, it looks like a knee because it bends like a knee and it's connected to a leg, but does it function like a knee is the real question there. If it doesn't really function like a knee, is it really a knee? Am I participating in a debate that I... That, I, I feel like this is way above my pay grade. I, I'm scientifically just... Mm. Uh. Wall sits their entire life. Quick side note, in Mandarin, the word for penguin consists of the characters for business goose, which is fucking hilarious. Like one day a That's goose cool. in a suit and said, today it is time to make a name for myself, honk. This next guy is known as Parsons Chameleon, found in the more remote regions of Madagascar. Notice the fleshy protuberances around its nose area. Turns out, not fleshy, not even remotely fleshy, not even one flesh. Instead, it just has a skull for Oh, that, yeah, that doesn't look good. Um, I would say everything about it looks awesome. It looks like it could be a dinosaur, except this one part. That really, it's like, a, it's like a bad, like, series of pimples on the nose of a very, very epic looking creature. Forever frozen in time in the middle of exploding. Like it sneezed right in the middle of God shaping it out of clay and he was just oh, like, man. ah, whatever, it's a feature now. So for that, this rough-headed reptilian gets number nine. Normally Ooh. I would have ranked it higher, but that's a dope tale, so he 
Yeah, this is it, when you give it the whole skeleton, it actually looks really awesome. Like that's like the small detail. But yeah, overall, I, there's probably a lot of like lizard type creatures that look a little bit cooler than this. Um, but that is an awesome tail. You get some pity points. Next is the puffer fish. So for most of Ooh. my life, I've pictured puffer fish as just not having any bones. I know it doesn't really make <laughs> sense, but neither does them turning into a balloon like a goddamn cartoon. Turns out in their normal state, they actually look like this. And when they inflate, those concentric rings of oh. spine slide outwards past one another to cover the full area. like the aperture of a camera lens expanding to cover the full frame of the fish. The sheer ingenuity of this design has shattered my childhood dream of real life balloon animals, which has earned the puffer fish the number eight spot on the slip. Hold on, no, that's not fair. That's really cool. Most skeletons don't do cool stuff like that. They just kind of move like they, 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 they yeah, they, they don't do all that much. That is a very intricate skeleton like that that's actually incredibly cool that i i thought it was just like some sort of a gland that expanded and maybe it is it, it probably is some sort of but the fact that the bone structure works with it that's that would probably put it on like a top list for me this is like this is a fun fact that i'm going to take to parties that i don't get invited to List. Now, if you've gotten around to certain zoological circles, you've been shown this skull and been told, ah, oh, yes, oh, that God. comes from the dwarf elephant. Oh, you've never seen I one? I know That's this. because, uh, they're extinct. And that thing in the middle? Ah, uh, yes, nothing more than the nose hole to which the trunk connects. However, if you're a rational, free-thinking adult like me, you can look past the lies spoon-fed to you by Nat Geo and other liberal media outlets and see this for what it is, a cyclops. Next... What he's doing there is actually really smart because that Cyclops misconception is a real thing that I heard about. There's a lot of things like this. I've seen people find bones and they're, they're not able to explain what it is. So they look back to old myths and they'll be like, this is the femur of a giant. This is the skull of a Cyclops. It's like, like by getting it wrong on purpose here, he's actually highlighting an actual kind of misconception that does occur. I don't need to be a big uh, Natty G reader to uh, to know that this misconception's real. Like, I've, I've heard this. This is really cool. It's clever. Clever boy. This is the orca, otherwise known as the killer whale, the panda torpedo, or the sea world slave. Its skeleton is fairly uh -huh. normal at first glance, but check out this little thing under here. That little bony blip is actually all that remains of the legs and pelvis of the orca from when it evolved from land mammals. Personally, I think oh, that's cool. highly disrespectful to their ancestors. Like, they could have taken the seal route and used those legs for good in the water, but instead these sea cowards said, no thanks, we're gonna undo all that evolution and just be bigger, smarter, warmer fish again. But hey, we'll keep this little piece of nothing just to remember remember you guys by true so i don't know a whole lot about taxonomy or evolution and any of that stuff uh i didn't know that orcas evolved from land mammals i just assumed that they evolved from something in the sea because land mammals i thought evolved from stuff in the sea to begin with i thought it all kind of started in the ocean and then made its way onto land. So to think that it would make its way onto land just to make its way back into the water. You see why I never ended up becoming a scientist? Like none of it, may, I, I'm so, I have my mind so easily blown by simple things and I can't do math. That's why I'm not a scientist. Truthfully, I could have chosen almost any cetacean to pick on for this, but the orca's face also reminds me of SCP-682, okay, which weird. is the most OP overrated shit out there. So he gets the number six spot. Moving on, now bear with me here. In every other mammal on earth, the canine teeth point downward from the gum to the mouth you know, like a tooth. But this guy, known as the Babarusa, said, huh, huh, and decided to have them grow up through the entirety of its fucking snoot and out the other end, which is the most nonsensical thing I've ever seen. Like, hmm, toenails out the front? How cliche. Let's make them go through the whole foot instead. Look, now I can kick good behind me. That's not all, though. These oh, tusks also keep God. growing for the... Uh, hold on. That looks like... That's gonna, like, poke his eye out. Jeez, like the evolution did you dirty. Um, I thought from from what we saw there, I thought it was just like a warthog, but it looks a little bit 
uh, that that is so weird. I've never seen. I don't think I've ever seen this creature before in my life. I I don't know if this is like something that you guys would be familiar with, but I that's this creature's entire life, which isn't a problem in and of itself, right? Rodents they keep chewing stuff to wear them down. Alligators they just let them fall out now and then. But the babaroos is like, pff, I'll just nut in a lady pig long before this becomes an issue. So if it lives long enough, the teeth can curve <laughs> right on around and oh slowly God. bore into the thing's face, That's like built-in Chinese bamboo torture. And occasionally, they can end up actually piercing the skull and shish kebabbing the brain. Now, some people might say that this doesn't belong on this list, given that teeth aren't technically bones. And to those people, kids, we say, eat shit and die. Next, we have the <laughs> octopus. The octopus skeleton is so bad that it doesn't even exist. Sure, they got this little thing. Okay, that's cheating. I was with you with the teeth thing, but now we're going, don't mess with the uh, oct octopodes. Yeah, funny thing, I, I I initially thought it was octopuses, then I was told in school that it was octopi, and recently I've been told it's octopodes, so my whole life is a lie. Thing in the middle, but that doesn't count, that's just chitin. And yeah, they can get in a jar or whatever, but at it's what really cost? Cool. At the animal picnics, the crowd shouts, bleh, shun the spineless freak. And at the animal wheelbarrow races, with cry. nothing to grab hold of, the cephalopod holds a solitary vigil at the starting line. And lo, the octopus wins not but a participant medal at the Grand Prix and the number four spot on this list. Moving on, here's the skeleton of a fruit bat. Now, oh. not a big deal to us regular folk, but imagine if humans had no context of bats and they dug this thing up. Like, class, archaeologists have recently found these fossilized... So I assume he's going to say that these are giant fingers. Uh, the, the giant, the, these things that go into the wings, I'd assume those are fingers. The one thing that really weirds me out is this little back foot thing. That's a little bit weird to me. I don't, I don't know why that bugs me so much remains. And using modern technology, we can see exactly what it would have looked like back when it was alive. This abominable creature oh, is not only to scientists as finger boy, and is theorized to have fed upon fruit, insects, and the dreams of orphans, which it would siphon out from the ears of the errant little waifs whilst they slumbered. By the way, if you Google image bat skeleton, like, more than half of them have the ears built in. Just like, hmm, I feel the That's extraordinarily bat-like wings and figure of our decoration are much too subtle for our consumers. Better slap these on. At number two, we have the anteater. From its I said anteater. That I, I'm actually happy that I got this one on this list because, like, that's a skeleton that I've seen and it's weird, but not because it's a weird skeleton, but well, it is a weird skeleton, but like, it's not like one of those cases where you look at the creature and the skeleton's weird. The the creature is already weird, and the skeleton is a about the same. Well, like skull to its gorilla fist and hands, one can only wonder who let this creature exist. Its hands are kind of weird. If you take the anteater's skull and blow into its nose, it plays a beautiful song recounting the animal's entire life, and then security escorts you out of the museum. Looking at this, I can only pose the question <laughs> asked for generations long before my own. That being, why the long face? Before we get to the number one spot, here's a few honorable Shush. mentions. The wolf eel. The ostrich. Hold on, I'm, I wanna, I'm gonna run through these and then I wanna pause one by one. But here's a few honorable mentions. The wolf eel, the ostrich, this human cat hybrid I found on a tabloid site, and of course, the mermaid. So at our number one. Okay, no, no longer interested, sorry. Spot, <laughs> we have this creature. That's, uh, that's supposed to be a mirror. I know most of you can't see yourself in it on account of your filthy Dorito smeared screen, so just take my word for it. So what's wrong with humans, uh -huh. you ask? Well, a lot of things, but for now, let's take the skeleton. <laughs> First off, these bones right here, these are known as the metatarsals. All part of the foot, right? No, Tarsals, that's a bunch of primate propaganda. And most other groups of land mammals, oh, what that's we on consider the foot. our ankles is actually the quote unquote knee of the animal. Thanks a lot, walking upright. Also, it's estimated that around 80% of people will experience chronic back pain at some point in their life. Thanks a I lot. I feel that right now. Up, right? Lastly, probably something you've heard about at some point, our skull to pelvis ratio. For most animals, giving birth, not a big deal. Small heads, wide hips, <whistles> mazel tov. But check out the big brain on Brett. Throws a real monkey wrench in the works there. For a while, it led to some problems, till those extra brains figured out how to work around it. So I guess you win this round, humans. That is actually a very interesting point. I, I don't know what it's like, to, like, Maybe if you live on a farm or something, you're used to like seeing animals give birth or something, but like, I'm not familiar with it. I haven't heard a lot about uh, high mortality rates in animals or whatever. I, I would assume today, like we have similar uh, stuff that can 
uh, prevent that as we have like that to prevent it when we give birth or whatever. But uh, even when I read about read history or whatever, I don't hear about like a lot of animals dying in childbirth. But maybe that's just not a very interesting thing to write about. <laughs> but that doesn't stop you from also winning the number one spot on the worst skeletons of all time. But hey, just because you'll forever be flawed on the inside doesn't mean you can't improve yourself on the outside. That's why you need to try Skillshare. Skillshare is an online Still learning Still haven't tried it, but I should. 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. For all my life, I thought I knew how to make a grilled cheese. Then I saw this class, and and I realized Ooh. I didn't. Now I do again. But those few minutes between seeing the thumbnail and finishing the course were a dark time in my life. But let's say you don't like grilled cheese. Well, you must be either <laughs> vegan or dead. And either way, you probably smell terrible. What better way to soak up that earthy must in your home than with a hand-selected houseplant known to improve air quality? You can even put googly eyes on it. Aw, huh. it's like I have a friend. Join the more than 7 million people already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my viewers. Everyone who visits the link in the description can get two months of unlimited access to the 25,000 plus plus classes on Skillshare for absolutely free. So please, I'm gonna put need down a that new broth and start promo code, Sam, when you come out with a new video. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'm still scared of swine flu. Sick. Uh, oh, swine flu, jeez, when, when was this video out? I mean, it was, I, what I do know, it was over a year. He says still, so I assume uh, it, was, it was kind of old at the time. Oh well. Uh, so that was weird. Um, that was a strange video. Um, with me going through a lot of history stuff from him, uh, what's left over is like a very strange selection. I know there are still some history related ones that I've kind of uh, overlooked and I will get around to soon. I I've kind of been down with checking out new stuff outside of what I typically would like like it's not like I'm going to turn around and start checking out like the most popular viral clip on the internet or anything but I'm down with anything that's even like remotely educational and this despite the silliness was kind of educational it taught me a thing about puffer fish I'm going to use that at some point I don't know what else I learned, but yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what Sam and Ella video you want me to check out next. We're gonna take a little break from him. We're gonna check out some different stuff uh, for tomorrow. So let me know what else you want me to check out on the channel, non Sam and Ella stuff too. Uh, all right, thanks for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, bye.